Hi, my name is Stephanie, and these are my two adorable and handsome sons. And that is my ex-husband, attorney Dennis Sperling. He practices personal injury law and will be more than happy to help you with claims arising from automobile accidents. He doesn't get paid unless you get paid. And as we first wives know, the more our ex-husbands get paid, the more we get paid. So let me help him help you. <coughs> Call Mr. Sperling at 713-229-0770. Oh yeah. <clears throat> What's up, y'all? This is Dennis Sperlin, also known as Uncle D Man, and I'm back at you guys. And uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge everybody. This is our second month here on YouTube. Uh, really, I mean, I started in December, so December, January, we're going into our second month. It's amazing that I went from having maybe a thousand followers and. I don't know, maybe January to, I mean, uh, in, in, in November or December to having 10,000 folks, man. So, you know, it's you guys, man. It lets me know you guys really appreciate what I'm doing, man. And I, I appreciate you guys because trust me, I thought it was bad before. It's even worse now. I got people out here I don't even know heckling me and complaining about what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm opening myself up. You know, normally I just would appear on television shows and, uh, you know, different news broadcasts. And, you know, I would say what I have to say. And typically when you do that, there's other people who are degreed, people who are seasoned. They know how to conduct themselves. And, you know, it's all back and forth. It's polite. But here on YouTube, this is like the wild, wild west. I'm telling you, man, these folks are, are very interesting. People have alternative motives. And, uh, you know, I'm new to this thing, but you know, I believe that my message is honest and it comes from the heart. Um, I really, uh, I really just, I really want to see you black men do better for yourselves because when you do better, I do better. My sons do better. We all do better. So these messages that I deliver to you guys are the same things that I would tell my sons if they were your age or older and things I wish somebody had told me when I was a younger man so that I would know what to look out and be a better man for it. But uh, first and foremost, man, I definitely want to give a shout out to Universal 178. Thank you so much for the super chat donation. I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, I and you know, some of you guys saw that this is not just something that I start doing. I've, I've been advising young men, older men. Uh, the brother that you saw the other day on the, on the boxing video who's on my uh, channel he gave us that, that beautiful photograph for myself and my family, um, you know, that's a young man. I, I've known him for maybe a couple of years now. He's been to, teaching my son's boxing. And, uh, you know, I, I simply, you know, sat down with him one day after he finished training my kids at the park and we just talked for a minute. And he took that one conversation and now it's totally turned his life around. So, you know, some people like to give me the credit, but to me, uh, all the praises should go to God because all wisdom comes from the most high. So I'm just a humble servant and I'm privileged to be able to give to you guys what wisdom I have. It's just, you know, um, I'm, I, I always temper it with making sure it's, it has the direction pointing uh, north towards morality and towards what the most high would want. I, in other words, I'm not gonna tell you guys anything that's going to be deleterious to you, to your reputation, uh, to your family, to your name. So, um, you know, that that's, that's the barometer that I use. But in the meantime, if you guys would like to contribute to the Super Chat, the Super Chat is up. The Cash, Chat, the Cash app is ready to accept all donations. That's just your way of letting me know you appreciate what I'm doing. Either Cash app, Super Chat, PayPal, it's all good, man. But, um, and, you know, before I get going, Pan African, Ados, a1 Black, man, thank you so much. My man Excalibur is always in here. James Neal, 
represent the block gang. <laughs> Brian Turner, Firestorm 855. Some of you guys have been here since uh since my first uh you know couple of broadcasts. So thank you guys. And I believe you got somebody, Nicomaya, being yourself, testament to your work, brother. Yeah, thank you so much, man. This is that's the most high. Uh, all praises go to the most high, man. I don't take credit for that. Um, and as I said, if the Lord chooses to use me as a messenger to inspire you young men to be the best men you can be, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely willing to do that, even if it costs me, uh, you know, some discomfort and angst. But uh, it, it's a beautiful thing to see you brothers do well for yourself. And then also Valerie Kermu, the second. Malika, brother Malika, what's up, man? Always good to see you back in here, man. Uh, and I'm glad you guys are here. I want to talk to you guys about something that I saw on the internet the other night. It's uh, something that uh, I find intriguing. And the reason I find it intriguing is because it seems as though um, there are a lot of other countries dealing with the same thing that we're dealing with here in the United States as black men. And the truth is, it's not just black men. It's actually all men. We're being effeminized. We're being watered down. And so we have to recognize that there's a reason that governments see a benefit in having weak, docile men walking around. They see the benefits and they see the drawbacks. But one of the benefits is you don't have a bunch, bunch of hardheads walking around, you know, saying what they won't stand for and what they will stand for. You know, you don't have a bunch of men getting together saying, you know what, we don't like the way things are. And by gosh, we're gonna use our will and our force to make things change. In other words, the more strong men you have around, the more dominant males, the more uh, authoritative males, the more men that believe in themselves, confident men, what ends up happening is, um, um, you know, <laughs> you, you got a high chance of getting a revolution. You know, and, and Excalibur beat me to it. Yeah, <laughs> no revolution with weak men. And so it behooves the government, right? It behooves the government to make sure that men of all races, of all ethnicities are watered down and you're not inspired. They want us to be uh, overweight and defeated and, and feeling like victims. They want us to do that. Otherwise they have to contend with us. Otherwise there might be some damn change. See, those type of men were the ones that overthrew the, uh, you know, the English government back in 1776 and turned this country from a 13 colonies into the United States by force of will. Those type of men were the ones that took over the uh, uh, monarchy in France, you see. And so that's the type of masculinity that that's what happens when you get your when you reclaim your outlaw masculinity. And so, what, and I use that term specifically because in this country, right? Nowhere, they're, they're moving towards outlawing typical male behavior. For instance, man spreading, which was something that popped up about five, six years ago. This is when you're sitting in the bus or sitting in the subway or sitting in some, sub, um, in some uh, public place and you're sitting there and you don't have your legs crossed, you got your, your legs open. You, this is deemed man spreading and for some reason that which is a natural position for most men because it make men because it makes room for your 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 uh we'll call it your manhood to to, to be to breathe um you know that that even that's outlawed rough housing in schools things that boys do and that any psychologist knows helps the boys develop uh it helps the men develop and, and you know they're they're, they're their brain development. It helps them learn how to socialize. This is outlaw. This is all oh, this too rough. They want to give you a pill. They want to give your kids a pill. I don't know if they still do that now, but back in the day, five, 10, 15 years ago, they always would love giving kids Ritalin, and all these other drugs to try to calm down, mostly boys, mostly black boys at that. Because see, we are always at the tip of the experimental sphere. If there's something that's going to be experimented, we're going to start off. They'll start off experimenting with black folks and typically black men. So you know, whatever happens to us as black men will typically happen to the rest of the world 20, 30 to 40 years later. So they started off separating us from our fathers. Here in the United States, now they got white men and all other men being separated from their sons because that's the first link. That unbroken chain 
that unbroken link of manhood is passed down from father to son. So when you break that link, guys miss that. You see, and there's no way you can read you, you can get what you didn't you what you were supposed to get as a young man if you don't have your father around by purposely pushing the fathers out, by purposely uh, you know, separating the father or only having to be what I call a Disneyland dad, you know, vacation dad. He only sees them on every other weekend. You see, what what does that do? That means by the time the man sees him, all he really has to do to try to make all he really has time to do to try to make a good impression on his kids is try to, you know, you know, take them on vacation every time they're together. It's a festival. Right. Which is clearly not enough time for this man and his children to bond and really for him to put in the time necessary to help raise them. But um, either way, I want to point out this article that I uh, found on BBC. I'm putting the link to the article in the chat room if you guys want to check it out. And let's just read it, right? See these guys here? You got this article came out four days ago. It was written by Karen Allen. And uh, it says, China promotes education drive to make boys more manly. All right? And notice from China's education ministry has caused a stir after it suggests young Chinese men have become too feminine. The message has been criticized as sexist by many online users, but some say China's males, celebrities are partly to blame. Now, we all know that young people are impressionable. And the Chinese governor, government is saying, yeah, the Chinese males, celebrities are impressionable because they went from having masculine, military type guys, sports figures, to having these soft sort of guys that young men look up to and say, okay, I want to be like that. So now move forward. You got young men who are entertainers here in the United States, young black men. And, uh, you know, they're putting pink diamonds in the middle of their foreheads. You know, they're running around with uh, dresses on. They're painting their fingernails and toenails. These are the type of celebrities that a lot of young black men here in the United States are, are uh, replicating. The Im those are the images, there's those, are, those replicate. You, you don't have anything, there's no fear. The government fears not those type of men. They are, they, are, they are harmless in every sense of the word. They are not strong, masculine, domineering men uh, like, um, I don't know, Reggie White, who was one of my role models, a football player who played for um, the Green Bay Packers and also I believe he played for Philadelphia. Um, um, they, they are not like um, Lawrence Taylor, um, a gentleman that uh, has been deemed the, the greatest football player of all time. Um, they, they don't they don't have these sort of individuals anymore. They don't they don't they don't have these men to pattern themselves after. Even some of our actors and, and singers, Smokey Robinson, The Temptations. Whether they were smooth, but they were still manly with that. You see, e even with the crooning, they were still manly. We don't, these young men don't get that this day. So that's why the Chinese government is saying, you know, these men, these young entertainers are part of the blank. Now here's a, let's read on. For a while, China's government has signaled concern that the country's most popular male role models are no longer strong athletic figures like army heroes. Even President Jing Bing, Jing Bing, uh, Zhao, I think it's I think it's Zhao Jing Bing, a well-known football enthusiast, has long been seeking to cultivate better better sports stars. This, when they say football, they're referring to what we call here in America soccer. So last week, the Education Ministry issued a notice with a title that left no doubt about its ultimate goal: the proposal to prevent the feminization of male adolescents, these are preteens, called on schools to fully reform their offerings on physical education and strengthening their recruitment of teachers. You hear that? I mean, think about it. Now you're dealing with a communist government and some will say, you know, it's a communist capitalist government, I get it. But the bottom line is they've been recognizing for a, a while now 
the government has recognized for a while now that they have an feminization of their boys. It's to the point now, think about it. You got a bunch of young Chinese boys who haven't developed the strength and athleticism that necessary. Who's gonna fill your armies? Who's gonna fill your police? Who's gonna do your construction? Who's gonna do that? If you got a bunch of guys who are more concerned about fashion than, 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 than masculinity, they're more concerned about painting their nails than, uh, you know, and, and, and posting pictures of themselves on social media than they are about the things that men have traditionally done. But nevertheless, so what they did was they, 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 the proposal, <laughs> the proposal left no doubt what they're trying to do. The crazy, who's complaining about it? Well, you got feminists complaining about it, but also some men. Check this out. The text advised, this is what the text did, physical education, training, recruitment of and recruitment of teachers. How many of us went basically our whole high school, uh, elementary, middle school, or junior high, went to junior high, high school without having a male teacher? Maybe your physical education teacher was a male teacher. Maybe you got lucky. But for the most part, you never really ran across any male teachers. So what, what are they doing? They're getting more teachers, more male teachers in the school to influence these young men. The text advised recruiting retired athletes and people from sporting backgrounds and vigorously developing particular sports like football with a view of cultivating students' masculinity. So what are they doing? They're, they're, we're going to make these boys be more masculine through what? Uh, surrounding them by, by may, other men, OK, so they can be properly socialized, recruiting uh, retired athletes with sporting backgrounds and vigorously developing sports like soccer, which is what they call it, to help cultivate student basketball. What that's letting you know is that the Chinese government, like everybody, knows that you, women can't teach men how to be men. The only you know, they, they say tox, mass, or toxic masculinity is when a man, I guess, is too masculine. But the truth is toxic masculinity is what happens when you allow women to try to teach their interpretation of masculinity to boys. Or they allow their own beliefs to uh, uh, supersede what men know, know require, uh, what men know requires for a man, a boy to become a man. So they basically tell them, we know we need men to help out. We Not only do we need any men, we need strong, masculine men. And, and we're going to start with, uh, you know, sports. Because sports, you should, what, competition? You got to compete. You got to be tough. You got to be mentally tough. You got to get out there. You got to sweat. You got to do stuff you don't want to do. You got to be uncomfortable. You got to deal with the rain, the sleet, the snow, whatever they have over there. So uh, it's a decisive push in the country where the media does not really allow for anything other than squeaky clean, socially responsible stars. So here's 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 where we are, right? They're basically saying the media has tried to clean up the image of all their stars, squeaky clean, no tattoos, perp, you know, clothes looking nice. That ain't necessarily manly. You see what I mean? That's not, and see what that does is it sends a, a wrong signal down to young men. It tells them, you know, this squeaky, men aren't squeaky clean. And you guys should stop apologizing for how you feel and what you do and how you act. That's a, that's another thing. One of the first lessons I taught my boys was you can't pay attention to everything women have to say. And that's no disrespect to women in general. But what I'm saying is if you as a man start listening to everything women have to say about how you should dress, how you should feel, how you should look, how you should carry yourself, how you should talk what you should be doing for you woman, blah, 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 man. You won't even have a mind of your own. That's not what being a man is about. It's about you, you establishing what your standards are and your principles are, what you will go for, what you won't go for. And if people disagree, that just disagree. And that goes for men and women. But I'm telling you, most of the time, if you find yourself always listening to women, man, they're going to lead you straight because they're going to have you doing, they're going to give you that real man. And then real man, usually follows with follows up with something that benefits them and not you. Uh, but, but the socially responsible stars, this is what they call, you know, the ones that, you know, uh, play the game, they 
You know, they don't say any, they don't use any curse words. They, they're like little kept fools. Somebody would keep in their purse. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is something that we need to look at. Socially responsible stars. Sometimes you need some rough guys. Sometimes you can need some rough, some, you know, not quite tame. Like, you know, every now and then you need a Steve Austin, right? You need a Steve Austin, right? You need that guy. You need the inappropriate guy, right? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Um, my man Grego said, let me drop this here so that Uncle D doesn't have to play any of his commercials. <laughs> hey, Uncle D, what's good? Hey, what's up, Greg? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to play commercials anyway, man. But uh, anyway, but thanks for the uh, $5 super chat, man. You guys, if you want to donate, man, the PayPal is at the bottom. But tonight we're talking about masculinity. and We're talking about reclaiming what our outlaw masculinity is. As a matter of fact, the rest of this week at this time, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about developing masculinity and not just older men, but middle-aged men and young men. OK, so I think it's important that we're going to talk about the physical aspect, the mental aspect, the spiritual aspect. Uh, and then, um, and, you know, we're going to get all into that. You know, I'm going to give you guys some pointers. We'll talk about it a little bit later on. Uh, but this is the first of that series. Um, but there were some earlier signs suggesting let, let's take a look. Let's read up next. But there were some earlier signs suggesting that such a move was coming. Last May, a delegate of Chinese top advisory bodies, C. Zifu, said that many of Chinese young males have, have become weak, timid, and self-abasing. Weak, timid, and self-abasing, right? This is what's going on now. I want you guys to pay attention. I'm going to read this, the rest of this through, but I want you to know why. A lot of these young men are raised by their mothers and their grandmothers in China, fellas, okay? It, is this starting to sound familiar? There was a trend among Chinese males towards feminization. He claimed which would in inevitably endanger the survival and development of the Chinese nation unless it was effectively managed. Here's the thing, fellas, and this is what I've been screaming for the past two or three months. You know, people always say, you know, a nation will only rise as high as women. And I get that. They get that from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I get that. But anybody will tell you that a nation, and when I say nation, I'm talking about people, okay? I'm talking about a nation of people. I'm not talking about an empire or a kingdom. Some people confuse, they, they confuse the word nation with people. You need the type of men and women you can build a nation on, okay? I'm not talking about an empire, I'm talking about a nation. So in order to have a nation at all, you got to have strong men. Yeah, that nation may not rise as high as its women, but damn it, you won't have a nation at all unless you got strong masculine men in there. So now they're saying we got weak, timid, self-abasing men here. And there was a trend among young men, young Chinese males towards feminization. In other words, they're being a feminine claim, which was inevitably a, 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 in, in danger of survival and development of the Chinese nation, unless it was effectively managed. Z Safu said home environment was partly to blame. Pay attention, pay attention, fellas. Caesar Fu said the home environment was partly to blame with most Chinese boys being raised by their mothers or grandmothers. Think about that. Don't we have that same problem? But nobody wants to do. The reason that we have such a problem here in the United States with the feminization of boys and also black boys specifically is because what? The same issue that they're having over there. The home environment was partly to blame with most Chinese boys being raised by their mothers and grandmothers. Now, couple that with the fact that you don't have fathers around as often as you'd like to, which they should be there. When a boy is younger, yeah, it's fine, I guess, for him to be with his mom. But at the point where he becomes a man, he needs uh, a young man, an adolescent, he needs to spend more time with his dad. Uh, but also look at the role models that they have to look at. You got a young thug and a dude with a pink diamond in the middle of his head. You know, he also noted that the growing appeal of certain male celebrities meant that many children did not want to be army heroes anymore. Yeah, so they don't want to be army heroes. They don't want to be football players or soccer players. No, they want to be IG models. They want to be effeminized dudes with 
little, uh, uh, you know, pink fingernails and stuff in China. This is what they're saying about China. This is what the Chinese government is saying about China in this article that is from the BBC. OK, um, this is what they're saying about. Them. So now you got young men and don't aren't we having the same problem here in the United States? He suggests schools should play a greater role in ensuring young Chinese get balanced education. OK, so so here's the backlash. What are men afraid of? The overwhelming majority of Chinese reaction to the notice has been negative. So the Chinese, right, it's been negative. You know, the government, right, it, this lets you know that the government has a battle on their hands. So the vast majority have, has, has been negative. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese, to, in other words, trying to masculinize these, these men, the, the, the population is said that it's been a negative pushback. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese have taken to social media to voice their anger with many branding the government's message as sexist. Thank God the Chinese government really doesn't care. You call it sexist. Oh, well, but just because something is sexist, does that necessarily mean it's bad? You know, I'm, I'm just asking you, is, is just because they label something sexist, does that necessarily mean it's bad? You want your boys to be uh, more vigorously, uh, uh, you know, physically fit. You want them to be more manly, manly. You don't want them to be acting so feminine. You want them to, you know, uh, you know, man up, basically. You know, that's what you want them to do. So uh, what's the problem? What's the problem here? Eh? That's the question that we're asking. Um, but in the meantime, is feminization now a derogatory term? Uh, one Weibo user asked receiving over 200,000 likes. Another said, boys, okay, so here we go. Let's check. Is feminization now a derogatory term? In other words, you guys are saying they're being feminine. Is that derogatory? One Weibo, I guess one one Weibo user asked, receiving over two hundred thousand likes. Another said, "Boys are also humans. Being emotional, timid, or gentle, these human are human characteristics." Yeah, that's cool. Emotional, being emotional, timid, or gentle. All right. I guess that's okay for you know some, but when you got the majority of your boys being emotional, timid, or gentle. Uh, that's probably going to be a problem because you also need them to be what? Policemen? And you don't want an emotional policeman. You don't want a timid uh, military uh, personnel. Uh, you don't want a gentle uh, uh, construction worker, I guess, right? So isn't that something we want to consider? What are the men afraid of being? What are the men afraid of? Being the same as women? Uh, yeah, right? Because if you know, that's, you know, it, it's almost like, yeah, like who, who who asked that question? You see what I'm saying? But this is what governments around the world are dealing with. There are 70 million more, and, and check this problem out, there are 70 million more men than women in this country. Another claim, no country in the world has such a deformed sex ratio. Isn't that masculine enough? So, so one of the arguments is basically, we got more men in the country than women. Yeah, well, see, masculinity is not just something that, relies on your gender. You can have women who are masculine. We know lots of women who are masculine. We know lots of guys who are feminine or effeminate. It's, your gender should coincide with, with, with your socialization, either towards a masculine frame or a feminine frame. And you should definitely not have, you shouldn't be overly uh, uh, feminine if you're a man and you shouldn't be overly masculine if you're a woman because that defeats the purpose. And it goes against your hardwiring. It's almost like you, you're hardwired to be a man, but your programming says feminine. You're going to have some problems with that operating system. Another said, none of these proposals have come from women. Okay, <laughs> right? These are proposals from men saying we need more masculine men in this country. And, and look who's complaining about it. They might be right. Much has been written previously on how China's top leadership is significantly male dominated. From from some of the media through, uh, though, there was a positive reception for the drop. The Global Times newspaper noted it had won some support. Okay, great. But you, they're even pushing back. And this is China. Imagine what this is going to happen to us when we start saying we need our children to be uh, more manly. You, you see what I'm saying? But check this article out um, on social media platforms. Cindy Wu 
comments pointed towards China, China's male celebrities being to blame, Lar largely those who are known as little fresh meats. I can only imagine what that is. This is a buzzword that refers to young Chinese male icons who are seen as squeaky clean, well-groomed, and with delicate features. Boy band, TF Boys, and Chinese singer Lu Han fall into the category, as do many K-pop stars. Uh, this is hilarious. So they're basically saying they got a bunch of soft entertainers that these kids are patterning themselves after. While figures like baseball players, uh, basketball players like Yao Ming have found overseas fame, it is notable that the football specifically, and that's they mean soccer, specifically is included in a proposal. And if you ever played soccer, it's a tough sport, man. You're going to get banged around in there. Don't think just because you're not using your hands, you, 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 you won't catch a concussion out there. Man. It's real, man. Uh, that should not that should not come as a surprise. President Zhao has previously spoken on this hopes that the country will become a world football superpower by 2050. But uh, repeated attempts to okay, you guys can read this, man. Uh, you guys can read this. It's, it's the article I read most of it, but for the most part, man, you got countries trying to read because everybody sees this as being a problem, and and a lot a lot of it has to do with the fact that technology has made unnecessary the traditional roles that men have filled. And so because of that, we're in a situation where you got a lot of men who don't really have anything to do. They don't know what to do. You see what I mean? They, what are we going to do? Well, where are we at here? What are we, what's the situation? You know, and, and so what do they do? They pattern themselves after what these guys call these uh, K-pop stars, you know, and uh, we kind of got the same problem over here, fellas. So, um, what do you guys think about this, man? Is there anybody who wants to chime in on this subject? Uh, I personally feel that, um, you know, as I said here in the opening, I said black masculinity has been under attack for a long time. The dominant society has gone out of its way to feminize and emasculate black men and boys done by celebrating and uplifting black alphabet uh, representatives without presenting a countervailing straight black male or cisgender male representatives, uh, along with the distort. In other words, what I'm saying, yeah, I get it. You got members of the LGBT crew, but you always put them up, right? But what you don't do is you don't put masculine, black, heterosexual, or cisgender men up. So, you know, why is that? Why the overrepresentation? You know, why the overrepresentation when, according to the studies that came out, you know, the LG, the, those, those brothers that choose that, path in life uh, only represent a very small percentage to the tune of one to two percent. Now on the LGBT side, they'll say, well, it's up to 10 percent, but still, that's a very small percentage. Whether it's one to two percent or 10 percent, it's not 50. But what I see on, on, on television is like, as of late, 80 to 90 percent of the black men who are portrayed on television or the movies what are they? What roles are they playing? They they often have them as members of you know the LGBT community, which is does not accurately that distorts the actual numbers, you know. And there's no countervailing roles. Even. You don't have it. It doesn't come. It doesn't match. What it does is it makes brothers think, oh well, this is this is the norm. And so you got a young impressionable kid coming up thinking this is this is the norm, and that's not true. Um, here's another thing, also placing black men in subservient roles on television and movies and other forms of art, stripping and, and stripping black men of strong masculine black men as role models. Think about it, man. We take a look at, uh, we take a look at movies like Marvel comics and they got, uh, all the, the lead heroes, right? All the lead guys are, are, are Thor, right? Even fat Thor was man, you know, even, uh, Robert Downey Jr. who comes off kind of effeminate. As Iron Man, he's still man. Um, but then you got the Falcon, right? The Falcon, he's uh, uh, Captain America's sidekick. Um, and, 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 you know, and some of you are saying, it, it, so he never gets to play that male role. Now, I know they got some stuff coming out, but now they, they see him, uh, you know, him and the Winter Soldier are like you know, antagonists, protagonists, and they're like goofy guys. You see them in the Volkswagen, but so there's never really like anything sort of standout masculinity. And and then now in the situation where the Black Panther, which was a great movie, and I appreciate it, even there, they they robbed him of his intelligence because in the comic books, 
the Black Panther was like the super intelligent and the super fierce fighter. He was like one of the best fighters in 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 Marvel, right? And I'm using Marvel because everybody knows Marvel. And everybody, we all watch Thanos and all that. Man, I'm like, ooh, you know. Um, and and so, um, you know, that's fresh in everybody's memory. And so we don't have these role models. We don't have these masculine role models. And what does that do? You know, young boys don't have any heroes to pattern themselves at. Young black boys don't. They don't have any heroes to to to, to look up to. You know, um, you know, and, and so it's just something we need to. There's no. They're stripping black men of strong masculine black men to, as role models. Um, they started with black men, and now it's all men. And that's what I pointed out earlier. So the question that I have for you guys is: How do we reteach ourselves? The lost art of masculinity, because the truth is we're watered down too, fella. We are watered down from, from what our fathers were, from what our grandfathers were, from what our great grandfathers were. You guys know those guys. Man, they used to walk around with, you know, with nice uh, fitted suits on. They used to have, uh, you know, they would always be ready to cut you. <laughs> you know who? Who had an uncle that always had a knife on him all the time? I had one of those. Uncles. He's always had a knife on him or a pistol. Uh, he would uh, talk and rhyme. You know, he would always be outside. Even to this day, the man is 70-something years old, and he's always outside building something, building a shed or something like that. These are the type of men that that uh, that I, I grew up watching. And so I can only imagine the type of men that they grew up watching. Even the testosterone levels, man, according to the scientific studies are dropping. I mean, it's, it, we don't advocate physical fitness. You know, they always anything that's manly, anything that makes you manly, anything that makes you masculine, outlaw. You know, even down to the point of eating red meat and lifting weights. You know, this all oh, that's bad, it's bad for you, joint, blah, 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 this, that, that. And, you know, what I'm trying to say is, fellas, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, for ourselves to reteach ourselves masculinity, right? Uh, and and what are we gonna do to, um, it's a lost art. What are we gonna do to make sure uh, our sons and our nephews get that? So join the conversation, you guys. We'll take a quick break. You guys join the link. The link is in the chat room. If you like what you're hearing, man, make sure to contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App. Uh, we'll be right back. Let me see. I'm going to run a commercial. Or what do you guys want to hear? Let's see. We'll run a video for you guys. Here's a good one. All right. We back, man. What's up, you guys? I hope you guys enjoy the music. I hope you all enjoy that little break, man. And uh, you guys like the music. You're always welcome to stream it live. Stream it on Apple Music, YouTube, music. All I got like six albums out that I put out. Good quality music. It's the type of music you can listen to as a grown man. The truth is, I wouldn't have been able to write that music and perform it if I was still a young man. I started doing music years back when I was a young fella. But, you know, at this point, it's like, I'd rather just practice. Man, Malika, what's up, Malika? How you doing? We got a young brother named Chris in here. What's up, Chris? How you doing? Peace to you, good brother. Peace to you. Peace out, right. Mr. Sperling. All right, what's up, man? So, look, what do you guys think about this? I mean, we can take this from anywhere, man. We can talk about it from the perspective of what we're dealing with here in China. But I put that article up, so you know, it's not just us. We're not the only ones complaining. This, we're not making this stuff up. There has been an attack on masculinity in this in this world that we live in, in this society. Uh, this this this, I know uh, this mechanical, uh, technologically savage, uh, a savvy. Society, there seems to be a, a lack of need for masculinity. What are your thoughts on that, Malika? Um, I agree. We are definitely in a matrix that does not want um, masculine energy, true masculine energy. They want pseudo masculine energy mm. to prevail. And pseudo masculine energy that the dominant society wants, subservient kind. And definitely a pseudo masculinity that wants to be controlled and defined definitely by our women. Mm. And I had said this many times and I got into some discussions, some arguments and some debates with women. I said, you want masculinity, but you want it on your terms. 
And they would argue and they say, no, what we, I said, no, you want masculinity on your terms. So it's a pseudo form of masculinity. Some explain what you mean when you say they want it, but they want it on, ter on their terms. What do you explain to the audience what you mean? They want it how they want it. Just how, just like how when you can go to Burger King or McDonald's, how you want your burger, you want it your way. Mm -hmm. They it, want it how the way they can define it. They want it how the way they control it, manipulate it, and shape it. So, but the thing so is, is fair, so is it fair to say when they you say they want it like? Can we give an example of? Uh, they want you to be a cuddly, big, soft, mushy bear. But if someone says something wrong to them, then they want you to burst out of that soft, you know, you know, panty shopping partner into this savage, you know, retaliation force. Yes. Most okay. definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah. yeah. They, they want you to be a controlled mm -hmm. zombie bodyguard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you tell women, no, if you want me to be masculine and a man, I'm going to give it to you how the way I'm coming from my mm -hmm. aspect as a man. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how to be a feminine woman because I have no idea how the way it is. I know it when I see it, but I can't tell you how I want you to be. Just like you can't tell me how the way you want me to be or any other man how you want, how you want them to be. Yeah. All right, cool, man. And and and, and so uh thanks, Malika. I appreciate that. Anybody else wants to join in? The link is in the chat room. Chris, man, what are your thoughts on this subject? You're a young man. How old are you, Chris? I'm 27. So you're going through it, man. You you see this firsthand. Like I come from a generation where at least they tried to at least fake, like, you know, we weren't under attack. But your generation, man, they just they hit you with all these messages, man. What what are your thoughts on what's going on right now? Well, exactly the way you said it and the guy said before, y'all both right on point. And the, the truth is, I see this, the, the same thing that's going on in China, it's the same thing happening to us. We just a couple of years behind because mm. the Chinese, they started like in 1949, they went full feminist. They had mm. men and women equal before we did. And just like the guy said before, they're making the new superheroes effeminate, not not similar to what Justin Bieber was when he first came out. So the heroes that the young men are looking at over there, they just feminine and the same thing happening to us. We just mm -hmm. a couple of years behind and it's not yeah. just black America. It's, it's, no. it's all of America. We just a little bit ahead of the rest of America, like you said. Yeah. And even even our football players are, are feminized. You yeah, know? They, they, there's 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 programs to make sure they look feminine. They make them wear pink. They make them support breast cancer. They do that to all of them: football, basketball, and they do it on purpose. Yeah, because they're man. they're the most masculine. And the crazy thing is, man, you know, uh, if we talk about like testicular testicular cancer or uh, what what is that? Uh, I, I want to, it's prostate. not bladder cancer, prostate cancer. That affects men tremendously. You would think that a group of men who who play football and who are subject to that same uh, sort of cancer would say, hey, well, let's celebrate this day. But no, what they do is they, belt, they celebrate breast cancer, you know, and I get it. You want to keep the female audience happy. You want to keep them involved. You want to soften the image of the, of, of, of the football the sport, but is that maybe why there's been a decrease in um, people's uh, uh, interest in American football? Like, I don't, I can't sit up, like they always try to compare people to like Lawrence Taylor and Reggie White. I just don't see it. I just, I see these guys and, you know, I know they're out there playing ball and everything, but, you know, it, it's like they feminize even the game of football. You can't hit the quarterback. You, None of that stuff that they used to be able to do when I was going, when it was really a sport. Now it's to the point now even women can play it because it's really it's, it's not safe, but it's a lot safer than it was in the in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, and 90s. You, you understand? What, what do you think about that, Chris? Well, that's that's. That's that's the that's the that's how they're progressing it because mm. the whole society becoming more feminine. Mm. So 
even even the guys who were beast mode in the game, most of them after the game, you you if you didn't know that they were a professional athlete, you'd be like, this a little B. That's what yeah. he looks like. Around here, they got, I mean, you know, and I'm not complaining about culture, but some of the stuff they do, you know, it's just like, bro, it's, and, and even with some of the basketball players, man, all the tattoos, and, and I'm not complaining about it, you know, but I'm just pointing it out, the tattoos, and then you got, you know, it, it's just in the hair and the wild hair. There was a quarterback that played for uh, Carolina for a while. What was his name? What's the brother that played for Carolina? He played quarterback for uh, the Carolina Panthers for him. I forget his name. They traded him up to New England. Uh, what's the guy's name, man? Who knows the name of the quarterback? He played for North brother. He was real good. He was all he was all world like his first three seasons. Then he just fell off all of a sudden. Uh, Cam Newton. Cam Newton, man. Why they got him in there with high thigh pants on and you know like. These these suits that these dudes are wearing, and then you got people like, dude, why are you why are you trying to dress like that? What what are you doing here? What what is it? What is it that we're doing here? You see what I'm saying? And it's almost it's almost they like to, they're trying to push it on us, man. What are your thoughts on that? But like, it's definitely that they're pushing on us, brother. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. You got to figure um, if you are a high profile person, entertainer. Um, sports star, he's going to have a stylist and he's mm. going to have people around him. And this stylist is going to tell him, this is in, you need to wear this. And because it's cool, man, you got to wear these tight pants with no socks on and you got to wear this, but it's all about trends. It's all about mm. fitting in. And just because it's trends and it's fitting in doesn't mean it's masculine. No. The problem is what, what is missing and just like how you said, um, Tony Dorsett, Franco Harris, man, um, Wilt Chamberlain. Mean Joe Green. Mean Joe Green. Um, yeah. Clyde DeDry Drexler, Julius Irving. You know, these were dudes in our time that we look up to. And these mm -hmm. men looked masculine. Muhammad Ali looked masculine. And Muhammad Ali had the face of a model. You yeah. see what I'm saying? But he was still masculine. You, you know, when we saw these men dress, I, 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 I do a throwback to you. Um, Richard Roundtree, a shaft back in the day, 1973. Right. Now, even though that was 70s style, but nothing was effeminate with him. Mm -hmm. You know, even if um, you want to talk about Priest and Goldie, the Mac and Superfly. Now, mm -hmm. these images were of men that might have been negative, you know, a Coke dealer and a pimp. But the, still, the image and energy was of masculine men. Right. The thing is, what they're trying to do, and it's an agenda to try to control young men to think it's okay to be gender fluid. It's okay to look a certain way. It's okay to wear your hair a certain way. It's okay to not be masculine, even though that you're being rewarded for your masculine traits as an athlete, but your mindset still has to be effeminized. Right. Your character, even at your heart, as your core, you don't have to be masculine. But when you perform and do your duty or your job, we want you to be masculine for that because we're paying you hundreds and thousands of millions of dollars, but we don't want you to think like that in your life. Now I'm, a, I'm, a, you know what? Here's the thing, and I don't want you fellas to think I'm picking on you. I'm picking on your style, or picking on anything. This dude right here, his name was Prince. Okay, Prince was an artist that I think when Prince passed away about ten years ago now. So back in the day, man, he he. This week I grew up. He was already established artist. I was still a kid, but this this is how this dude used to dress. You see what I'm saying? But see the difference between this right here. And what you guys have is this was considered weird and abnormal and definitely uh, not the norm. But now compare him to what's 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 the young brother named Young Thug? What's the one with the pink? Uh, Chris, what's the name of the dude that put the pink diamond in the middle of his head the other day? What's his name? Lil, Uzi, Lil Uzi Vert. Lil Uzi Vert. They, <laughs> they also had Harry Harry Styles the other day on the cover of something looking like uh, a straight up woman. Lil Uzi Vert. So. And I, and I, so I'm not knocking the brothers with the with their style. I, I get it. You know what I mean? I, I get it. They're artists and all that. 
but this is the same thing that the Chinese government is saying. This is influencing. Uh, this is influencing our, you know, our young men. So you look at this cat, right? I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at how he's dressed, and you know, he's definitely out there. You know what I'm saying? Not too much difference between this picture and what Prince was doing back in the day. Shirt exposed, all that sort of stuff. I get it. I get where it comes from. Uh, but my point is, uh, there's no countervailing uh, artists. You know, where are the masculine exactly. artists at? You know, where are they at? You see what I mean? Exactly. This is an overrepresentation of one section. You understand what I'm saying? One group of, of, of men. Where, where's the rest at? At least, okay, you know what? We had the thugs back in the day, but then we also had an LL Cool J. We had a Will Smith. We had an Easy E. It was a balance. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But now it seems like all oh, they're throwing at these young brothers is these feminized rappers. And it was a time when rappers were supposed to be hardcore. You see what I mean? But now I'm like, man, come on, get up out of here, man. But uh, anyway, Malika, go ahead. What, what, what else are you saying, man? And then we're going to go back to Chris. Anybody else who wants to join in, join in. Um, well, Chris, Chris said his phone is dying. Chris, you want to add something before you get out of here, man? Chris? Uh-oh, we lost the young brother. Yeah, Chris. He, he said it's my been a trend. Off. It's been a trend, and it's just getting worse and worse. So mm -hmm. in five years, you're about to see regular guys with that bull ring in their nose mm -hmm. because we just getting more feminine. It's been a trend, just like Prince and Michael Jackson back in their time. They was a little bit more feminine, and and the stars and like the popular people now, they're they're kind of a little bit more feminine. You know, yeah. blending in with the girls and all that stuff. And it's a trend and it's just getting worse and worse. And it's just worse in China. And the same thing is happening here. As I said, though, my phone is dying. I wish I wish I was in a better position to continue the position. No, it's cool, Thank man. you for having me on. No, man, you always welcome back, man. But you have a good day. Be safe out there and look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you for joining in, Chris. Shout out, Mr. Sperling. Shout out, guy. Welcome. Yes, sir. All right. So anybody else who wants to join in, we got room on the panel. We're going to chop it up a little bit. We're going to talk about this. And this is a subject that we're going to talk about all week. Reclaiming our masculinity as men. This is this is the subject matter for this week. And if you know men uh, who, 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 who have sons, if you uh, know men who uh, might need to just chop it up with some other guys, you know, just to hear what other men are talking about so they can realize it's, it's not just – not just me seeing this. Join in. Join in the conversation. Tell them to come chime in tomorrow and and all these days this week because we're going to talk about it. All right. But uh, Malika, what else would you like to add to these young brothers, man? Well, you know, I've got a list, right? <laughs> yeah, I've got the list. What, what's your list say? Let's see. Um, when you said what things could men do to add masculinity or counteract any uh, feminizing. I wrote it down real quick when you had the break. Um, mm -hmm. The first one is shun any ideology that conflicts with true masculine nature. Right. So, uh, cause see, what they'll tell you these days is, what do they say, man? They say, uh, they, they, they got this concept, they say gender. Gender, right, which is biological, right? Gender is a choice. Uh -huh. Like You can choose your gender, but see, if I'm looking at a plant, you have the male and the female aspects of each plant. Mm -hmm. OK, so the gender is a, is a scientific determination. Same with human beings. Either you got the male or the female. Now, arguably, somebody can be a female and say, well, I'm a man. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a woman because woman and man are terms. They're constructs. Mm -hmm. But male and female, that's gender. That doesn't change. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes what they try to do is confuse it. Your gender is either male or female. Right now, you can be socialized to be effeminate or you can be socialized to be masculine. Clearly, we've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get effeminized to the point you're a man and you get effeminized to the point that you just want to call yourself a woman, well, you go right on ahead. You're still a male as far as gender. But typically what happens is the reason that we have socializations for men, uh, I'm sorry, socialization for male and socialization for me, female, i.e., masculine socialization for men and, and 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 feminine socialization for women because your biology dictates that these are there's some things that you are going to be
be more prone to do and be more apt to do and enjoy doing. You drop a bunch of kids in a room with uh, certain uh, toys. Oftentimes, boys will do different. They'll choose different toys and they'll do different things with the toys that they choose. They'll play different because that's something that's natural. That's something that's prevalent in small children. That's not even something you have to teach them. So you take that boy and you enhance that masculinity. You enhance what's already in there. That's all you do. It's just it's no different than if you have a, a certain breed of, let's say, terrier, a little short terrier. They used to use them to hunt mice and rats and whatnot. And so when you take him out and about, he's going to be sniffing around low to the ground. You see some moves, his eyes going to be darting around. That's what he's prone to do. You see what I'm saying? And you can't really get away from that. But go ahead, bro. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, second one, do manly, competitive, masculine things, mm -hmm. i.e. weightlifting, martial arts, right. boxing, boxing, playing chess, learning how to shoot and use firearms. Mm -hmm. The next one, don't play it safe. Take risks. And the last one, find a masculine mentor. Run, the, run that list back consecutively, man, so we can all hear it, because that's a great list. The first one, shun any ideology that conflicts with true masculine nature. Number two, do manly, competitive, masculine things, i.e. weightlifting, martial arts, boxing, playing chess, because you're using both sides of your brain. Mm -hmm. Learn how to shoot and use firearms. Don't play it safe take risks. And the last one, find a masculine mentor. Man, that's a great list. Can you type that into the uh, uh, the uh, private section? I'm going to put that list up. These brothers need that because that's a great start for them. Jared, welcome. How you doing, Jared? And then, uh, Jared, you have some noise in the background. So if you can uh, turn that. Apologies about that. Oh, no, it's cool, man. If you can just turn it off. Uh, and then we'll go to... Uh, and we'll go to Thanos afterwards. Is it clear now? No, I can, I can still hear. Okay, one second. Uh, you can go to Thanos first then. I'll Thanos, my man, man, what's up, man? Always good to have you back in here, man. What's going on, bro? Uncle D, pleasure to be here, man. How's it going? Hey, man, always good to have you here. Look, we're going to be talking about this topic all week, okay? Word. What we're trying to do here on this page is we're trying to make men become better men. You see what I mean? And the keys to manhood, uh, uh, well, let me say this, the, the doors to manhood, <laughs> you gotta unlock them with masculinity. You see what I'm saying? Yes, uh, that, that's crucial. And so trying to separate a man from his masculinity, that's man, that's like trying to take a, 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 a you know wings from a bird. You see, whether well, you know, it, and it just it, it does everybody a disservice, especially the man. So, what are your thoughts on this subject, man? Is this worthwhile? And look what they're doing in China. I mean, I didn't even know that was going on in China, but then again, I don't really pay too much attention mm -hmm. to what's mm -hmm. happening in their culture over there because I'm so wrapped up in what's happening to us over here and what right. we're going to do about it. So, I didn't really but it, it, it lets you know that we're not the only ones dealing with it. Look what they said, they said it's because. Part of the reason why is because the vast majority of the young men are raised by their mothers and grandmothers. So when, when these lovely ladies tell us that, you know, you don't need a man to raise a son, well, we can point to the country of China, with eight, uh, you know, with a billion people over there and say, well, that's not what their government said. And that's not the effect that they're having with all those young boys being raised by their moms and grandmothers. So in that point, that's actually a really good thing that you made this aware to like, you know, everyone in the whole public because I had no idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why it's important to, uh, you know, first of all, stay abreast of the news and read, read the news. But then also uh, for, for us to look to other cultures to learn, you know, and that's what I, I try to do. I want to I want you guys to realize that it's more to learn. Uh, from examining other cultures, it's not going to hurt you to always keep an eye on what's going on around around the world because they're dealing with the same thing. But uh, hang tight for a minute. I'm putting the link back in the chat room. Jared, are you available? You got your uh, yes, yes, sir. All right. I think he's still. Okay, but go ahead, man. I, man, I, we'll see if we can work with. What are your thoughts? Um, 
it's it's really like one of these things where like you're being penalized now as a millennial man or stuff for being masculine or standing in your masculine you know like so you always have to worry about that like i've worked in state legislatures and stuff like that and done all that stuff and i noticed there was a lot of conversations i couldn't even have or even debate or you know talk with other organizers and stuff because it'll immediately go to toxic toxic masculinity mm. or you're this or that xyz to the point where i have a degree in international affairs but i'm going i, I just enrolled for trucking school i'm just like i'm i'm ready to, like like a lot of young men are opting out like me just saying oh. you know what it's not even worth putting in the sweat equity in that space you know what you should do, man, when people say, oh, that's toxic masculinity, ask them, well, what exactly is toxic masculinity? Can you define that for me? What is that? Right. And see, and then say, and then follow that question up. And the reason I ask you, because it seems like even typical male behavior is considered toxic masculinity. So it's like you're outlawing our masculinity. You're outlawing everything that makes us men. Exactly. All right, and cool. that's that's exactly exactly what it feels like, and a lot of young men. Are... Oops, I'm sorry. Go ahead, bro. You said a lot of young men what are seeing this, and they're they're just getting discouraged from like even trying to be, you know, like like you or whatever like that. It's like, why put myself in this space where, you know, one tweet is going to destroy my career if I want to be a lawyer or whatever, you know. Yeah, I know just what you mean, man. Look, I went on television uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago on Fox, and I talked about how the uh, the family law system is biased against black men. For, I mean, who didn't know? Do we all don't we all recognize that the criminal justice system and the civil system and the justice system in America is biased towards black men? Of course we do. Why would that not change when we go into family law? That for and for the most part. Family law is biased to all men. And, you know, the fact that we're black, you got those socioeconomic issues that we deal with. Traditionally, we don't have as much money. We don't have as much of a, a, a financial background or a cushion to rely on. On top of that, the judges and the lawyers and everybody else walks into the courtroom with the same prejudices about black men that they've always had. And so because of that, we're looked at like we're already the bad guys. And when we say, hey, we want our father, we want our children, we want to spend more time, blah, 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 this, that, and that, we're always looked at with the John side. And so I went on television and I basically said that, man, I've been getting all kind of flack from uh, these lovely ladies out here uh, on Facebook, YouTube, in real life. It's just been interesting, man. So, yeah, you know, nobody wants to hear. This is the cancel culture. That's what they'll do to you. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. it's really bad because, like, working in politics, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, sexual harassment on the male end. You know, mm -hmm. when, when the males get in it from a lot of the female, you know, colleagues and stuff. But he can't do nothing about it but ignore it and just put his head down mm -hmm. and say nothing. And I mean, in politics is you know how that is. You know, with happy hour and other stuff like that. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. some people are going to sleep around and have affairs and do all this other stuff. But at the same time, it was like at, if, if I even messed up or even looked away or, or, or took the bait, I, I would be done if somebody had it out for me, you know, it wanted my position. So it, it was like it's it's stressful. It was stressful. Hey, man. Hey, and now you say you, you got out of that. You drive the trucks. Now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can I can make a hundred grand seeing the whole country. Oh, man. <laughs> or, really, or yeah. rocket, what you call it? I feel you, brother. I feel you, man. But that's why we're here, man, just so we can chop it up and start to come up with some better strategies. But as you see up here, man, Malika, um, it says the home environment is partly to blame with most Chinese boys being raised by their mothers or grandmothers. And just to put that in context for people who just joined in, the Chinese government is saying, that they got a whole bunch of feminized boys. And part of the reason is these boys are being raised by their mamas and their grandma. Why is it, Malika, that we've been saying that same thing here in this country to these lovely ladies? You cannot be a boy. You cannot raise that boy to be a man. 
And why is it that they refuse to believe that? Why? And, and we got a whole country of 80 billion people saying the same thing we've been saying. Why does it take a, a, a scholar, a scientist, a group of scientists to say that over there? And will they believe us now? I'm like, I don't know. But you, you tell me, what, what's the problem? Why, why do these lovely ladies think they can raise these boys to be men when clearly they fail? What are your thoughts on that? Because feminism lied to them and also um, Big Daddy government lied to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you got to understand for 60 years, um, our women. You mean the lovely ladies? Are these lovely ladies? These lovely ladies have been doing their own on their own and they think yeah. they can get it. But even though the, the, the thing is, BGS taught us guilt, shame, they need to be right. And I'll throw another caveat in there. Um, uh, lack of accountability. It, it shows. Mm -hmm. It, it, it shows that, you know, you when you think that your education, your job, that you may be making six figures, your sorority, your mega church, all the times you've been around the world, all the girl trips you've had, your beautiful $200,000 condo, your beautiful 2021 um, vehicle. Mm -hmm. makes you think that it's better. And you might have a child from a previous relationship and your child is doing great, but this child has no masculine energy in him, knows how to be a man. Right. Whose fault is that? You know what I'm saying? It's because he didn't learn it from a man. Um, my man Jared said, I got to go. I appreciate you letting me contribute. Man, thank you so much, Jared. I appreciate you. Thanos, check this out, man. And I'm going back to this article from China. Last May, a delegate of China's top advisory body, uh, Xi Sifu, said that many of China's young males had become weak, timid, and self-abasing. Weak. They don't want to fight nobody. They'll bust their caps on people. Timid. They scared of everything. They don't want to speak up for themselves. Self-abasing, which means they talk about themselves or they could have low self-esteem and do bad things to out themselves i.e. smoking weed, tattooing themselves up, all kinds of stuff that you do about yourself, not taking care of yourself. This is the same thing that we're dealing with here in the United States with our young black men. You see what I'm saying? I would say, yeah, yeah, just because you shoot, you're still weak. You shoot somebody. You don't speak up for yourself. You're self-abasing. This is what happens when you get a young, bunch of young men who are not raised around assertive, strong men to teach them how to do what? Speak up for themselves and assert themselves. You see what I'm saying? What do you think about that, Thanos? They're going around. They, this is the same situation we're dealing with here. Over this country of 80 billion people with all the money in the world dealing with the same thing. They still cannot figure out how to replace their fathers in these homes. Think about that. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, this is coming straight from the Chinese government. Yeah. And, like you know, they have the statistics and everything to back it up. And, yeah, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's, if they're saying the same thing as us, as black Man in the U.S. and yeah, they so, are correct so, and we are correct. So, so then, so then, why don't we begin to act on this now? I mean, is it since because you know they never believe what what the brothers have to say, right? You know, we always nobody believe. You know, the one thing I learned this from somebody else who was this that said that the one thing about black folks they never believe the experts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially their own black. And I'm gonna add a caveat: their own black experts. They never believe us. But now that you got these Chinese people over here who are next up to run the world, they're saying the same thing is happening to them. Matter of fact, they have, what, 70 million more uh, men in the country than they do women. So it's not just about numbers. It's about having a particular type of man raising your son to mm -hmm. be masculine. Isn't that something, Malika? What do you think about that? It's not just you can't just throw any old man in there to raise. You got to have. What are, what are they trying to push for? They said they were uh, strong men. They want they want men who are uh, vigorous, uh, you know, sports uh, enthusiasts. They want men who are, uh, uh, you know, men who outwardly masculine and physically fit. These are the type of men that they want. Why is it they just didn't want any old body out there raising, uh, you know, influencing these young men? Because they want the alphas to lead. Yeah. Alphas lead. Alpha... Mm -hmm. And it's not just the oh, But here's the thing, bro. I know a lot of guys, they might be muscular, or, you know, and they, they, you know, very masculine. They don't make a lot of money. Some people wouldn't call them alphas. 
You see what I'm saying? It's a mindset. I certainly, I it's certainly wouldn't call somebody like uh, what's what's the man's name? Uh, he doesn't look out for me. What's his name? Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. He's worth billions of dollars, but I wouldn't want him to give my sons any lessons on masculinity. It's you all different saying? types. But you know what? Yeah. Here's the funny okay. thing. I'm glad you said that. I want all to get different that types. established first. Yeah. Um, and this is the thing when you keep saying a masculine mentor, and here's where we as men have to define. See, a lot of mm -hmm. times we think masculinity, we're thinking external. Mm -hmm. He's big, he's strong, mm -hmm. he's broad. I will give you, you a perfect, I will give you a perfect example of a class of men where it was a perfect embodiment of spiritual, mental, and physical masculinity. The samurai. Okay. The samurai warrior was trained in forms of combat and warfare, but also he was trained in how to be what you would consider a gentleman, a man of honor. He was also trained in calligraphy. He was also trained in Japanese flower arrangement. He was also trained in understanding the hierarchy of who he is serving under. Yeah. And he also is trained to understand how to be of service. Mm -hmm. And they were and regarded it, that. And this it, is where it, you... And this, go is ahead, where go you're, ahead. this is where you're seeing a total, complete embodiment of what a masculine man is and how he carries himself. Mm -hmm. Now, just so you guys understand, not only would I not want uh, Bill Gates to give my sons any lessons on masculinity, I also wouldn't want Terry Crews to give my sons any exactly. lessons on masculinity. And Terry Crews, for all all intents and purposes, he swole, right? You see what I'm saying? But so it's cool. not just about the mind and the physical, it's about a combination of all those attributes. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying, fellas? So this is what I want you guys to understand. This is what I want you to take away from in this conversation. Um, we got time left. I'd like to get some more people in, but before we do that, I want you guys to make sure you show your appreciation what we're doing here by uh, supporting it and um you know contribute to the super chat and the cash app the link is in the chat room we'll be right back hey what's up everybody if you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here then make sure you contribute to the cash app make sure you contribute to the paypal make sure you donate to the super chat it's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going hey if you're enjoying the content here at dennis sperling unfiltered make sure you support it by like sharing and subscribing to the channel and also Hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. The only time black men are allowed to speak is when it benefits others. So hey, this is your opportunity to speak. I wanna hear from you. And if you wanna make this voice louder and clearer, then what you need to do is contribute to the Cash App, the PayPal, and the Super Chat. I appreciate you. Thank you everybody for your contributions. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Donate to the Super Chat. Donate to the PayPal. Donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. Now, you guys, I definitely uh, appreciate the contributions. And that's why, you know, I know you guys appreciate that, plus the likes and the shares. So far, we got 126 likes. I need you guys to make sure you subscribe to the channel. And do this for me. Please tag other friends, man. Share this on Facebook. Uh, tell them to join the YouTube channel. Tell them to come on in. We got 10,600 people uh, who are uh, members who have subscribed to the channel. I want to get this up to 11,000 before the end of the, uh, of the week. Here's the thing. The reason that I'm under attack, right, the reason they treat me like I'm a gangster rapper from the 1990s, <laughs> is because what I'm doing is I'm providing a voice for you guys to speak. And it's very unpopular to allow black men to speak openly, to speak their mind freely. And see, because I'm an attorney, you know, because I'm deemed successful by society, uh, because I have, uh, you know, a certain national appeal, um, and, and because of my degrees and my pedigree, people listen to me. And so what I'm doing is by setting this platform up and allowing other brothers, everyday black men with everyday black men experiences to use this platform, it makes your voice equal to so many others that you would, would normally never be able to, you would never be able to out bullhorn them. But see now they're hearing your voice. 
and it bothers them because they want to keep you black men quiet. They want you to go somewhere and, and be quiet and sit in the corner and die alone and unhappy. That's what they want. They want you to quietly go away. But because I'm able to provide this platform for you, it bothers them. It bothers them. That's why I've been getting so much pushback. I've been here two months and I've already had about eight or nine heckle, heckle videos against what I'm doing here. And largely all I do is ask questions. So what does that tell you? It's largely me asking you all questions and getting these answers out of you guys that annoys people. So think about that. So are they really protesting me? Or are they protesting this platform, which allows you to have a free and open voice to speak your opinions? So that said, know what you have here. Appreciate what you have here and show your appreciation by contributing to the class, at, uh, contributing to the to the cash app, the PayPal, um, the, the super chat. And then also make sure you like and share and subscribe to the channel. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel. But either way, Malika, man, go ahead, man. Give us some of your in. No, you know what? Let me let Thanos go first, and I'm gonna let you uh, help me wrap this up, okay, Mister uh, Mister Malika? Thanos, man, what what do you think we're headed with this if we don't cut this thing off at the pass? Well, one thing I do want to say is that if the Chinese government has decided that they want more masculine men, they have the ability to basically force their population to go along with it because mm -hmm. because of this the way they styled their country and right. they have a very large amount of their men going across the world gathering yep. resources they in africa right now taking everything they can get they over here they getting money buying buildings real estate and everything and if they implement this program with their people there and if it works and they get a nation of masculine men they're gonna take even more so oh, yeah. we gotta we gotta move quicker we got to basically yeah. do what they do, what they're trying to do right now. We need to do it before they do it. Mm -hmm. That way we can at least have a leg to stand on because it's just like the brothers had said in that other video when you had came out like a couple weeks ago about the Chinese and yeah. how they get down. Yeah. He basically said that we're going to be at the bottom of the bottom. And yeah. I don't want that for us. Shout out to Excalibur. I appreciate the cash app, man. I wish everybody else would contribute to that cash app. The cash app is easy. I can get cameras and all kinds of stuff with that cash app, man. I got to wait for the super chat money, but all of it is appreciated. But big shout out to my man Excalibur. But yeah, Thanos, you know, what also the thing is going to happen is, you know, you, you <laughs> everybody else is going to have to fall in line because they got the, they, they're going to have the strongest army, the strongest culture. And they're going to be the most emboldened. And that's what happens when you got the toughest guys on the planet. We saw, you see what happened when Genghis Khan decided to get his warriors. <laughs> they took over. There's going to be a, this Genghis Khan part two. They're going to come take over the whole world. Keep playing with them Chinese folks. What do you think? You think you're all you're dealing with. They rule, they've been ruling thousands of years. They know what they're doing. Um, but uh, thanks so much, Thanos. I appreciate that. That's a great input. I like it, man. What do we do, man, to head this thing off, man? What do we do here? I know you gave some pointers, but what happens if we don't to black America? Oh, just like the brothers say, we're going to go to the bottom of the bottom. Mm. We are. It's inevitable. If you do what not do you want say to people who say we're already at the bottom of the bottom. No, we ain't at the bottom yet because there's still men like you and Thanos here and other men that we believe in masculinity. Mm hmm. You rate you starting your sons now. Yeah. Yeah. But you also created a channel for men. You don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. You're a successful attorney, man. You could be chilling with your women, your woman and your children. Yeah. But yeah. you're spending an hour, an hour and a half every day, sometimes twice a day. Yeah. Just wanting to talk. And also you said you're making this whole week about masculine energy. Yeah. This is what we need. This is what we need. You know, remember um, Puffy had that um, saying, bad boys move in silence? Yeah. Well, this is what we have to do. This is our silent time. And then masculinity is not just for young men like your sons. It's for right. guys like me, yeah. guys like you, older gentlemen, 80s. It, it's never too late to learn. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, you know, it, it, it's... It's not like you can't have a mass thing where you can jack in like the matrix and all of a sudden you wake up 
a half an hour, you download like years and years of masculine teaching. No, this is something you got to learn. First of all, a man has to want to be masculine mm -hmm. and it has to be taught. If you're a man that you've been programmed, you got to deprogram yourself from this, this effeminized BS. Because Some of them don't even know. Some of them don't even yes. know they've been effeminized. And they you know what? Wrong. And here's the funny thing. Some will come, some won't. And let me tell you something. Masculine energy and masculine nature ain't for everybody. Just the same way as feminine nature ain't for every woman. Only the ones that accept it and that want to act and live in that true lane that they're supposed to be in is going to do that. And only the strong is going to survive, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much, bro. So look, like Brother Malika said, uh, this is not just for young men. I don't care if you're 65, 70 years old. If you're a man, then you need to always exhibit those masculine traits. You need to always be physically fit. You need to always know how to control your emotions. You always need to make sure your spirit is strong. You need to always have these things that are crucial and key to masculinity always in mind. Now, a lot of people will tell you, oh, well, I'm an old man. A lion never stops growing until he drops dead. And a man never stops being masculine until, well, he's masculine even after he's dead, actually. You see what I'm saying? So my whole point is, fellas, that you can't cop out, you know, and if you find yourself, you know, uh, doing things that you know makes you feel odd, makes you feel awkward, look into your raising. If you find yourself doing things your mother used to do, yelling too loud, getting overly emotional, um, you know, succumbing to your weaknesses and your fears all the time, you find yourself getting too depressed, these sort of things, a lot of that has to do with the conflict that you have going on in your program. Your programming doesn't match your hardware. You see, your programming doesn't match your hardware. You got that effeminized programming and you got this manly hardware. You need to replace that with some masculine heart, with some masculine program. And I promise you that it'll help your life work out a little bit uh, better. Nothing is going to be easy about this world we live in, especially as a man and more especially as a black man. But the world is supposed to be hard. But God made us this way. We're harder than anything that has come before us. Our, our brothers that came before us will show you that. That's why we're here. So it's on us to do what? To overcome and supersede the challenges that are in front of us. And we too uh, will overcome and then we'll be able to push that on into the next generation. But in the meantime, thank you, Malika. Thank you, Thanos. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to all other brothers who came in. Thank you to everybody who contributed to the Super Chat. We're talking about masculinity this week. You know, we're not talking about some fake masculinity. We're not talking about toxic masculinity. We're talking about developing ourselves to be the best men that we can be not just for the government, not just for the people at our job, not just for our woman, not just for our, our, our children. We're doing it for ourselves, being the best men we can be. And these are, we don't have an exchange of ideas all week about masculinity, what we think works, what works for us, because we need to talk about this subject. And we're gonna get back to the roots. That's why I call this uh, back to the basics. We're gonna talk about weightlifting. We're gonna talk about um, controlling our emotions. We're gonna talk about uh, dealing with anger. We're going to talk about how to channel that anger. We're going to talk about not holding on to that anger. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about our spiritual fitness. We're going to talk about our relationship with God. All of this is what we're going to talk about this week. So you guys tune in tomorrow. Anyway, man, again, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you for the contributions. This is Uncle D. And as I always say at this time, man, I'm out.